Okay, so this is going to be about Boris Johnson. Is he doomed? Is he going to survive? He won the vote, but will he last? And then also it's going to be a double whammy because we're going to talk about Lilibet, Mountbatten, Windsor, and her future. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, as everybody knows, um, Boris Johnson won the vote. Uh, but he had a large number of his own party who don't support him. So a lot of people think that he won't survive in the long run because of that. So that's what we'll look at, just a quick draw on Boris Johnson. Then we're going to see if Lilibet, uh has what her future is. Is she going to change the atmosphere of the monarchy? Okay, so we'll take a look at that. We'll look at the cards now. Okay, so this video is going to be the first part about Boris Johnson, the second part about Lilibet. And uh, so we're going to use these little cards for Lilibet and then these bigger cards for Boris. So let's see how it all works out. Yeah, so it was very curious uh, how that vote came down. And some people think, how is it even possible that uh, he made it through? But, um, you know, cards will tell. So we'll just do a shuffle here and see if we can figure out what's going on with Boris's future. Is he going to last? They say, I think maybe it's a year before um, something could happen. I'm not quite sure about how all that works in British politics, but uh, we'll look at it and uh, see what the cards can tell us. We'll give these a good shuffle and uh, hopefully there'll be some answers here. And But you know, first, before we do too much, I don't have my sign I usually put down, but you can decide uh, what you want to meditate about. Okay. Boris Johnson's future. Simple, quick, uh, Celtic cross. We'll see what the cards tell us. Boris Johnson, what's in the cards for you? So uh, four cards to begin with. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll do four more cards at the end of this to see where we are. Okay, Boris Johnson, what is the signifier card for your future? Are you going to last? Okay, so here we go. This is the. Uh, these are pentacles. This is seven of pentacles. Seven of pentacles is wondering if you've done enough. Very appropriate because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, value, worth. Um, have I done enough? Is there more I should have done? That's the seven, seven of pentacles for Boris Johnson. Sounds right. He's wondering, is there more I could have done? Now. The uh, challenge to that is the Knight of Pentacles, some more value. You know, the Knight is the fighter of the royal suite. This is the guy who's going to take his charge, and he's going to bring um, the mission uh, to fruition, perhaps. So the challenge to, is, uh, have I done enough, is the fight that's about to ensue. The base of this whole reading is the Queen of Cups. So the Queen, I don't think this is actually the Queen, uh, but I believe this is a symbol of the compassion, of Cups of compassion, emotion, uh, heartfelt situations. So I think the base of this whole thing is the heartfelt compassion or situation that the British people are dealing with in this uh, Boris Johnson situation. Then the past of the reading, justice. So justice will prevail. Uh, and this is a major arcana. This is number 11 of the, of the major arcana. So we're more than halfway through the Fool's Journey. And so in the past... Um, is a justice card, means he's traveled a long way, but it looks like justice in the end will prevail. But does that mean against uh, Boris or for Boris? The sky of this reading is the fool. And just like I said, the fool is the very beginning of the journey. So it looks like he got a restart on this. This is the point where we're going to see, um, is he going to just 
fall off the cliff or is his intuition is the sun shining down on him has he taken enough that he uh, has with him to complete this journey so that's what we have here and then the likely outcome of the first part of this is the king of swords you know the swords of truth justice rules and law and this is the king of swords so this is the absolute ruler of the uh, royal court the truth justice rules and law of this situation are what's going to uh, prevail now for the last four cards i'm just going to take them right off the top of this stack okay so the uh, very um, self of that question, uh, Boris Johnson's future. Well, we have the moon. We have secrets being revealed. Now, that's pretty scary because what does that mean? That means there could be things uh, that come out if there haven't been enough secrets already, more secrets that are going to determine uh, what happens with Boris Johnson. And that doesn't sound like a good thing. The uh, environment that that's in then, Queen of Wands. You know, Queen's uh, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And uh, the Queen of Wands is, you know, she's not the king, so she doesn't. she's not the end uh, result. But she is um, the one who's going to determine with her intuition uh, what plans are going forward. So the environment that this, uh, the secrets being revealed is in the environment of this queen of uh, swords. Now, the likely outcome of everything is this magician. So this is having all the tools on the table that you need to make a thing come to pass. This is in the hopes of the fears. And so this would be uh, Boris Johnson's hopes is that he has every tool that he needs to uh work his way through this and so far he has he's always been the one who can who uh, finds a way to wiggle his way through the uh, through the uh, quagmire of his problems and then the likely outcome of the whole thing is look at that it's the ten of swords truth justice rules law ten of swords stabbed in the back end of a cycle it looks like something's going to happen here in the final outcome that uh, that takes boris out. Does it mean he won't uh, be in for another term? Does it mean that this term will be short? Only time's going to tell. But just to read it over again, so the first the signifier of the whole reading is uh, wondering if you've done enough. That's what you're worth. Have you done enough to uh, clean up the situation? Is there more that you could have done? And it's challenged by the Knight of uh, Pentacles who's going to fight for his value. And it's underscored at the very bottom of this reading with the Queen of Cups who's telling us uh, with her compassion, with her emotion, and I think this is a very emotion, emotional situation for the country, and so that's what's supporting all of this. It's just right on that edge. The past of this reading with justice is telling us that justice has prevailed, okay? There's been uh, uh, a telling of what's going to happen, but that's in the past. And in the sky of this reading is the fool uh, letting us know that this is now a new journey. There's a new path that he has to follow. But then the likely outcome of the first part of this with his king of swords is uh, truth, justice, rules, law. The king is the king, and he's going to make sure that things happen the way they should. But the very self of that question, then, is with this moon card, secrets being revealed. So this is telling us that there is something more to come out, and it's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of this queen of wands, who is a very compassionate queen, but she's got a plan, and her plan is going to uh, take a precedent. It's in the hopes of the fears for that then is a magician. This is Boris having all the tools that he needs to pull out of his bag to make a thing happen. But in the final outcome, you got the Ten of, of Swords, which is, you know, it's the end of the road. So what does it mean? Is at the end of the road, there's, he won't be back again for another term? Or does that mean that this is going to eventually be that he'll be taken out before the end of his, his term now? I guess we'll just have to see. But what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and put right on top of this the cards for a little bit. So a little bit got a chance to meet the queen. It's her first birthday, which is amazing that that should happen during the queen's 70-year uh, uh, celebration, I think, anyway. So we're going to take these tiny little cards, which represent that tiny little person, a little bit, and see uh, what we can figure out from that. Now, we've already had a nice meditation, so we're not going to go through that part again, um, unless you feel like you need to. Stop the tape, uh, get your head together, because your interpretations of these cards is every bit as valid as mine. Okay? These are so little, they're so uh, demitas that I feel like I have to handle them with what? With kid gloves. <laughs> okay, so the uh, signifier for a little bit, then, uh, we're going to take uh, right out of the stack. Uh, we're going to go right here and say the signifier for a little bit and her future then is uh, the two of pentacles. You know, pentacles are value, they're worth, they're um, of the earth. And the two of pentacles is finding that balancing act, really making a thing uh, work perfectly. So a little bit's future somehow involves that balancing act. Now, the second card we're going to pull out of this for a little bit's future and how it might affect the monarchy uh, the uh, challenge to that, look at this. This is the Five of Cups. Cups are emotion, compassion. The Five of Cups is looking at, you've got three that are spilled, two that are left. So you're looking at, what have I done uh, that I can do more of? Okay? So we got that right there. 
Now, the uh, base of this reading, then, is going to be the Knight of uh, Cups, Cups of Compassion, Emotion, and the Knight is going to fight for his compassionate issue, okay? And then in the past of this reading, right here, we've got the Hierophant. So it's all about the government. It's not really the government, but the structure of the monarchy, maybe in, in, in with the government. The uh, Sky of this reading, for a little bit, is uh, this Ace of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law, this is what's going to rule the day. Okay, then we have over here the very self of that, uh, the likely outcome of this is look at this. So we've got the cups, compassion, three women celebrating. So this is a, a celebratory situation for a little bit's presence in this whole situation. Now we've got the um, si uh, the signifier of the question, which is this five of swords, truth, justice, rules, law. The five of swords is kind of a betrayal, the kind of um, uh, feelings as if you've been taken advantage of. Interesting. The um, environment that that's in, then, is the Queen of Pentacles, the value, the Queen of Pentacles, knowing the value that you have. And that's the environment that that's in. The um, hopes and the fears for this with strength. Okay, and that's what we need right now. We need strength to help uh, determine that situation. And then the final outcome of the whole thing as to whether a little bit is going to be a determining factor. Look at this. We've got the Ten of Cups, happy family, wishes being fulfilled. It looks like this little presence in the royal family is going to make a difference. So that's all we got. I hope you agreed with that. If you don't, let me know in the comments. And thank you so very much for watching. Well, I just tell you what the cards say. So I hope you agree with that. If you don't, let me know what you think. You know, I can only interpret uh, how the cards read to me. I just say what they say, and uh, maybe that doesn't agree with what you think, but uh, put a comment below. Also, tell me what you want to hear about next, because I'll do a video on that. Okay? Thanks a lot. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smith Waite uh, Tarot deck, the Centennial Edition. And um, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think I think it was Amazon. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, it wasn't clear that that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Wait uh, came to agreements on for the way the, they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, uh, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose in a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of, so I'm not, I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art. I haven't seen her original art for this, obviously. Um, I'm sure some people have, but, um, but that's what's great about these cards. It kind of gives them a built-in patina. It's not real, you know, it's fake, but it still makes them nice and mystical. And so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards. Now, the, 
at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing. And I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing, amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up, and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here, and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of the cards. Uh, and in truth, what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box, and uh, these cards uh, came in that box. But um, I got this first, and so I wanted to use the cards, so I opened it up, and oh, look at that, and I don't like that. This has to be tucked down in there, so there's a couple things that aren't perfect. But uh, so I took the cards out of here, opened them up, started using them, and then the other cards came, and I realized, oh, well, I can make this a complete set if I put these in here. What's in here? Of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in, if, uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the Tarot, Tarot of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh, Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book, and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards. Okay, so these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I. Ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost a little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful to use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you'd want to get in a, in a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it.
You really make a big difference. Thank you.